Today, we're looking at Pascal's 850 universal interface. And the points I want to highlight today are the interface's function generator capabilities and um, oscilloscope or analog input um, capabilities. And these features are really what make this interface unique and um, di different compared to any other um, data logger or interface device that's out there. So if I scroll down to the bottom, um, I can see in the image uh, we have these four analog input ports. And on the right side, uh, you see this indicator, it says one at the top. That's the first function generator output. And we have uh, the second and third one as well on the bottom here. So two and three are BNC outputs. The top one, um, those are a the, the banana style connector. And really the top one is for a high power device. So if we want to drive a motor, we can drive uh, something plus or minus 15 volts um, up to one amp total output. Um, which is really, really high for a um, function generator. And on the bottom here, you know, it's plus or minus 10 volts with 50 milliamp maximum output. So really this is more for a signal output. And we can output a um, sine wave, triangle, uh, square wave, or uh, a DC output with this. Uh, the first uh, output one here is up to 100 kilohertz and outputs two and three are up to 500 kilohertz. And the analog inputs, we can connect it to our circuit um, using um, analog, like an analog uh, cable. Um, and with that, we can have, um, for using two channels, we can have a maximum of 10 megahertz um, sampling. Uh, and if we're using more than two, we can have up to one megahertz sampling. So really this device is very, very powerful. There's a lot that it can do and it's great for a physics or circuit lab. Um, if I, uh, the example we're going to be looking at today is an LRC circuit. So we're looking at um, Pasco's uh, LRC circuit board here. And we're going to be connect, uh, creating this circuit here where the function generator is going to be connected to the whole circuit, which is um, it's an inductor, capacitor, and resistor uh, connected in series. And then um, I'm going to use the interface's analog inputs to um, to see what the output across the resistor looks like or across the, uh, we, can, we can also do other things like check the voltage output across the capacitor, the inductor. Um, for today, we'll just look at the output across the resistor. So uh, one thing, one more thing I wanna mention here is, uh, you know, we also on our screen, it would be nice for us to see what the signal looks like from our, our function generator output. So the 850 also has three additional analog sensor ports um, connected to each of the function generator outputs. So you know, we don't have to tie up uh, you know, wires connected from one to the other. We can actually just use our software to, to view what um, the function generator is outputting. So to show you a uh, full screen, what, that, what the circuit looks like and what our complete setup looks like, um, this is the function generator output here connected across the circuit. Um, the circuit is an inductor connected to a capacitor, all right, connected to a resistor. And this is the, uh, the negative side or the, the ground side for our output. And I also, the analog input cables here are also connected across the resistor here. And uh, again, we can also add some more analog cables or from analog connectors into B and C and connect that across the inductor and capacitor if you wanted to do so. Take a look at that. So from here, let me open up our capstone software and let me share that screen. And you'll see I have the hardware setup tab open here. I have the 850 uh, device on and plugged in and I have a USB cable going to my computer. And this is where I want to set up the interface. So I have my circuit connected here. And in order for me to view um, what the output looks like, I want to, um, I click on this little yellow circle here on the second port. And I, uh, you know, I'm going to tell the computer that I want to connect an output voltage sensor there. And again, that vo voltage sensor is built into the 850. Um, but this one here on channel A, I, I do actually have a, a wire voltage sensor connected to that. So I'm just going to search for that. Voltage sensor, port A. It's all the setup I need to do there. So I can go ahead and close this. And the next thing is if I open up the signal generator, here I can control the three outputs. So if I 
I just want to look at output two. I'm going to close this, open up output two. And uh, the waveform, um, I want to look at a sine wave, but again, these other options are available as well. I don't want to do a sweep. Um, a sweep is where we can program the uh, the 850 to, to go from, let's say, you know, one kilohertz up to 100 kilohertz in steps of 500. Um, that's something really advanced. Um, you know, a, a regular bench function generator, um, a, a typical ones don't have that functionality, but because we're driving it with software, we can, we can do uh, nice things like that. We're not going to use that for today. Um, here I can just, and this is where I can select uh, the frequency, um, a phase shift if we want, or we can control the amplitude from here as well. Um, on the bottom here, um, where it says on, off, and auto, uh, this is how um, we decide how we're going to control the output of the function generator. If I click auto, then really, uh, as soon as I uh, tell the software or I, or I enable the, the monitor mode, what we're going to show you in a minute, um, that's what, it's going to only turn on the function generator output then. Otherwise, I can actually turn it on right now just by selecting this button. But um, I would prefer just to use the auto button. That way, we're not wasting any. Um, that way, we can all the function generator is on when our circuit is complete. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. Well, again, we're just going to start off at one uh, one kilohertz or one thousand hertz. I'm actually going to just pin this here so we can uh, control that. Now on the right side here, I'm going to drag a scope mode. So really, this is the oscilloscope mode that um, I was talking about earlier. And um, on the scope mode, I want to see two channels. I want to see, again, the, the output from the function generator and the uh, wires that are connected across my resistor. So I can go to select measurement and select um, the output voltage. And I, I can also view, uh, I, I also want the voltage on channel A, and I can just go here to add similar measurements. What this does is it'll just uh, show me both at the same time on the same uh, axis. So both are checked and and click out of that. I also need to change the mode here. Um, continuous mode, what that does is it's actually trying to save every data point that the 850 is sending, but I don't want to do that. That's actually uh, maybe, you know, the interface will run for 10, 15, 20 seconds. Um, depending on your computer, but uh, I don't need to save that data. I just want to view it live. So I'm going to change this to fast monitor mode. And again, I'm changing this so that the capsule is not saving the data. So once I click fast monitor mode, this button changes to monitor. And that really is what allows us to view um, the live feedback. And as soon as I click monitor, because I have this auto check uh, mark selected, um, it's going to turn on the function generator. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Select monitor. And all right. So I have a one volt, um, plus or minus one volt signal here. Can actually change the amplitude. So let's do pick seven volts. And we can see it's live. As I change this, the, the wave is changing. And I'm going to add a trigger here to prevent this from jumping around. There we go. So you'll see there, there are actually two waves here. Um, there's the purple one, the big one, that's our V out, right, from the function generator. And this tiny one right here, that's actually the voltage across the resistor. So we can see it's really, really small. Um, the power really isn't going through the circuit. You know, it seems like the, uh, the inductor and capacitor are blocking that from happening. But what happens if we just change the frequency, right? So really what, in this experiment, it looks like we're doing is we're finding the resonant frequency or the frequency where the output's going to be maximum um, across that resistor. So watch what happens as I change the frequency. And again, I'm just going to just click on the arrows and, and just do this live, right? So we're at two kilohertz, three. All right, I'm going to keep going. I'm at 10. Let me increase this right here. And again, I can just keep going. I'm going to keep increasing the, the frequency. And I can see right that the voltage across the resistor, it's actually increasing. So I'm going to just keep increasing that. There we go. See, when we haven't reached our maximum yet, we're getting close. I'm going to again, increase this scale. And I can see right about 
uh oh, we're getting smaller. So right around here, we're at 130 kilohertz. Um, at that frequency, we have our maximum voltage out, uh, voltage across the resistor. And that pretty much is our resonant frequency. And you can see with, again, just 850 box um, using, you know, a couple of wires, our circuit board, um, it was very easy for us to use this software in the computer to, um, to control the experiment and get to the frequency we wanted. Um, so yeah, uh, I hope today I was able to show you some more function, functions of the 850 universal interface. Um, this box is very powerful. It can you know, replace um, the very expensive equipment on the lab bench. And um, yeah, great for studying circuits or doing other types of experiments. Thank you everybody for watching. I hope you learned something today and hope to see you in the next video.